everybody. Dr. Mary Crowley here for Now is the Time. And it is such an exciting time to be alive. Even though when you look in the news and you see a number of things around the world that are happening, in the natural realm, it would be easy to get afraid even. But God said, look up for your redemption is here. And he said, be of good cheer for this is our year. Like The Lord likes to rhyme all the time. Well, I've got Donna Rigney, who is one of my favorites. You know, she is a pastor and a prophetic voice, often, you know, seen on Elijah's dreams, sharing her visitations that God has taken her to heaven since she was a young girl, but also speaking to her truth has also taken her to hell and showed her the other side and warned people that we don't want people to go there. So we're going to be sharing about a number of things. So listen, Donna, good to see you again, my sister. It's so good to see you. I enjoy you so much. We're like um, salt and pepper. (laughs) She's pepper, I'm salt. (laughs) We're like two shakers that God's pouring out. God's shaking things up, isn't he? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, he is, he is. And, you know, he's joining people that have like spirits, like hearts, that are transparent and just, honest and we'll let him use them. And it's wonderful. It's just wonderful. Well, and you know, we're going to talk right at the, at the front of the program and then we'll get into some different downloads and prophetic words that God gave you. But there's an event in South Dakota that's coming up in a five weeks called Let God Arise. And, you know, Donna, you know this, but for people that have never watched my show, um, I live in California, you live in Florida. So we're both on opposite coasts. You're pepper, I'm salt. It's like we have opposites, but we have like-minded spirits and hearts. And we're here to tell the truth, be truth bearers today. But I woke up May 2nd, 2020, Donna, and I heard the voice of the Lord say these words, we won't shut up until you open up, open the heavens. And God told me it was a spiritual battle in the gates and that we had to go and take back these portals that the enemy had tried to block. And, you know, I I don't want to get into that necessarily thing, but that's what happened with Mordecai. Remember, he was at the gates of the city when Haman came in and he saw Mordecai wouldn't bow. That's when he went to the king, lied about the Jews, and literally there was a decree of extermination. And so right now we're taking back the gates and open the heavens. It's in Mount Rushmore, in Rapid City by Mount Rushmore at Monument Fine Arts Theater. And we are going to bring prophets and patriots together, and it's going to be very significant. So I had felt the Lord tell me to invite Donna. And remember, I I, I called you and left a message, and you prayed. And, and what did you say when you called me back? I said, yes, whatever it is. You- <laughs> but Jack, your husband had your Jack. Tell about Jack, your husband. I, I've forgotten that part. Tell me. Remind me. Well, you had said about the dream. Oh, your- yes, yes. Um, Jack had a dream about Mount Rushmore. And in this dream, he saw Mount Rushmore, but there was a huge firework display going on and and the trees around were in fall foliage. And so he he even has a t-shirt made with that uh, emblem on it. And and so when I told him, I said, Mary would like us to come to Mount Rushmore. He's like, yes, (laughs) because we know this is significant. This is a very significant, he had this, Jack only has a few dreams in his life and the dreams he's had come true. And this is one of them. Well, in the last time President Trump, you know, it was in July of 2020, he went for the 4th of July to Mount Rushmore with Governor Kristi Noem. And there was a huge firework uh, thing that went off there. There was thousands of people there. And so we are at a point that I believe that God is going to restore America that we're going to see a great awakening, but we're right now in the throes of battle and we cannot just put our head in the sand. We need to, first of all, decree and declare, but take action. And by going to Mount Rushmore to be part of this, I mean, this is what I always say, Donna, you ask the Lord and he will tell you yes or no, you know, Holy Spirit will tell you. And uh, so anyway, so Donna, uh, you know, I know there's a lot of things that we've been seeing Tucker Carson fired, I know the borders have been wide open. There's a number of things with fentanyl and overdoses and the money systems getting ready. Many people say are going to collapse. Um, What has the Lord been speaking to you about some of these things? Oh, get ready. (laughs) It's all good. (laughs) 
But you know what he's told me? It's really important for those that he gives his word to, the prophetic voices, to speak forth those words because he performs the words of his prophets. He doesn't perform the thoughts. He told me this years ago. I don't perform the thoughts. I perform the words of my prophets. So it's so important for platforms like this where you open up the earwaves for the truth to be declared and what God is saying. What's God saying to his people? So that as God, as we speak what God is saying, the word of God, God sends his angels forth to perform it. So that's, this is so, it's so important what you're doing, Mary. Well, so. and you know, you were on, um, you know, you've been on Elijah's dreams many times. And I have a lot of friends that, that have been on there, Johnny Enloe and uh, Andrew Whalen. He's um, another, he's a young man that's going to be at the event in South Dakota. He's been on there three times this month with Johnny and Steve Schultz talking about the dreams that God has given him. I mean, these are amazing, the dreams, but God told him it's time to tear down Jezebel, the spirit of Jezebel. Jezebel is neither male nor female. It's really a woman. I mean, in, in the Bible, her name was Jezebel and it was a woman, but it was a spirit operating in back of, of, of her. And on Friday evening, June 2nd, we're having uh, Andrew Whalen and Marcus Rogers, who's a 36-year-old pastor out of Chicago. He's got a very large platform on YouTube. And um, I just did an interview with, with those two guys yesterday. So you guys go watch that, that show. But we're calling all the people to bring their families, if you can. The youth on Friday night is it's 100% free. But the weekend pass is $77 up until May 2nd. Normally, it's going to be 97 So, you know, it's at a very expensive fine arts theater called The Monument on 444 Mount Rushmore Boulevard. Uh, it's very significant, even the address, 444. And so, uh, you know, Donna, so on the last show we did, we went into your background where, you know, Jesus came to you in the Catholic Church at 7 and kind of took you to heaven and you've been encountered heaven many times, but hell too. Mm -hmm. We're not going to go into the same thing, but he warned you to tell the people about hell as well. So mm -hmm. you're like this Liberty Bell. Uh, but I always hear you speak the positive that the Lord has taken you to heaven and told you, don't worry about what's getting ready to happen. So give me a little bit of update on what God has told you about the money and about mm -hmm. some of the things that are getting ready to happen now. Okay. And I, I want to just say one thing too about Andrew Whalen. Um, I've been watching him on Elijah's streams now. Jack doesn't watch YouTube, <laughs> so he just likes the History Channel. But he has these dreams. And I just shared a couple of dreams he had uh, on Elijah's streams the last time I was on last week. And they're almost identical to the dreams that Andrew Whalen has had. I, oh, I, I, I sat Jack down. I said, you've got to listen to Andrew Whalen on Elijah's dreams. He was like, wow. And Jack had one of the dreams over a year ago. And it's identical to one that Andrew's having recently. What, what was that dream, Donna? Well, the first dream was he saw um, this uh, battalion, military battalion coming down Pennsylvania Avenue. And um, it's it's actually right on Elijah list if people want to see it. And he sees um, uh, the different groups go out and go to the different buildings, the White House. The, uh, uh, and when they go out, they the military goes into the buildings and then people come out, lay their weapons down, maybe Secret Service, whatever, and they surrender. And what Jack felt from the dream was that the military was going to come in to rescue the nation and remove the wicked that have usurped the authority and gotten in there and trying to turn this nation into a communist nation. They're going to come in, take them out, and they'll be arrested. So that was that dream. And then just recently, uh, we were away ministering, opening a portal in Texas. Powerful. The glory has been powerful. God's got these strategies. Like you said, he has us praying, but he has us also putting some boots to the ground and doing some action and going to these places. We we went to Texas and we just went to Oregon, open portals there for the glory of God to come. God wants to invade the earth with his goodness and chase away the wickedness. Well, while we were in Texas, Jack woke up with this dream and he saw, uh, like in the dream, he saw this 
across the bottom of the screen, you know how during the, while they play the news, they put this ticker thing going across with uh, details of what's going on. And it was for everyone to stay inside. Uh, that There was a lockdown coming. And he said the dream was so real. He jumped out of bed because, you know, he's like, I'm not in Florida where all my stuff is. You know, he started getting dressed, rushing to get back to Florida. And, uh, and then he realized it was a dream and that it's, what, what God was saying through this was that there is going to be a time where there'll be a lockdown, but it's not a bad thing. It's for safety, that when the military, whatever happens to, to get this nation turned around, uh, that for our safety, we're going to have to stay inside and um, just be protected. So, Well, you know, and when you talk about opening portals, some people might not really understand, but we're talking about the spiritual realm, their gates. And, you know, I, it's, it happened to me first when I was in Scotland. This probably in 2008 up in Aberdeen, Scotland. And really everyone, it's really a, as, as simple as the only thing God has me do to open a portal is when you get the right people together. And usually it's not something that I plan. Now the one in South Dakota was is planned, uh, but yet I wait for the Holy Spirit to get the right people. And you always usually have people from the area in the land that have the authority in that area. And God just has me say Psalm 24, lift up your heads, O ye gates, be lifted up, you everlasting doors, let the King of glory come in. And, you know, last night, Donna, I had my Hollywood uh, prophetic Zoom call every Wednesday night, everybody, and you guys are all welcome to join it. Um, we have from seven to 10 Pacific time, it's 10 to 1 Eastern time, so it's it's all across the map, but uh, every time zone. But we had Andrew Whelan on last night, and he shared, and all of a sudden he texted me before, and he goes, Mary, the internet just went out. There was a huge storm, knocked out the internet. I can't get on. And so he said, I'm sorry, and, and I felt the Holy Spirit, so I know this was the enemy trying to knock out this internet so we couldn't get on. And so what I felt God say, just call him. And so what I did, oh, look, it's 10, 10 right now, which means completion, completion. Wow. <laughs> and so what I did is I had, I called him and I held up the phone while we had a couple hundred people on the, on these, you know, the Zoom. And Andrew shared for 45 minutes what was coming. And the Lord earlier in the day, Donna, had told me it's time to launch the special forces. And so I raised up a team of intercessors, about 30 people on that call, we're raising up intercessors now that the Lord set are special forces and the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. So I believe you guys at this open the heavens, it's going to be very strategic with God's special forces coming together uh, in whatever capacity that he's going to tell us to do. So we've got Donna Riggin, we've got you, we've got uh, prophet Manuel Johnson, We've got Andrew Whalen, we just talked about, and Marcus Rogers, but we've also got like Juan Savin and S.G. Anon. Those are two, two truth or patriots who are both spiritual Christians who are going to be there. Many people, they have thousands that, that listen to them. And then we've got Dr. Stella Emanuel. We've got, um, you know, Ashley Kelly Patterson, who actually was trafficked at six years old, Donna, right out of... Um, you know, South Dakota at six years old. Now she's probably in her fifties. Governor Christy Nome might be coming because I'm going to screen my film, Freedom Cry, Sex Trafficking in America on Saturday at two o'clock. And we're going to live stream. It's going to be an internet launch premiere. So even if you can't come, you can watch the internet premiere at two o'clock mountain. That would be uh, four o'clock Eastern and uh, be uh, one o'clock in Pacific. So we'll put out an email about that guys. But this is going to be a very significant event. And you know, one thing I want you to know, because I know you've been given a word about this too, Donna. Um, every single time that Dan, um, Andrew Ashley talked last night, he said when he had an encounter, the angel told him it's all about the children. Yeah. It's all about the children. What what word did you have along those done? It, the Lord spoke that exact word to me, oh, maybe two, three years ago. And he, exactly that. He said, it's all about the children. Everything that, that's going on is about the children on the enemy side 
but it's all about the children on God's side, that God is going to launch this grand rescue event to rescue the children. We're going to see wonderful things happen. I'll share what you asked me to share about when yeah. God spoke to me about the finances, because the enemy is trying to put fear on us. Uh, back in the beginning of 2020, when just when COVID was starting to break out in like a, a nursing home in Washington State, there were just a few cases. Uh, the Lord brought me in the spirit into this ballroom in heaven. And while I was there, um, I saw, he said, Jesus showed me, he said, I want you to see something. I looked down to the earth. So now I'm in spirit in heaven and look down to the earth and I see these two demons and they're stoking a fire and they're putting everything on it to make this fire really blaze. And he said, what's going to happen? He said, the enemy is going to be using politicians, news media outlets, different ones with wicked agendas to stoke the fire of fear and put fear out all over the world. And, and he said, it's going to backfire because what's going to happen is that fear is going to cause people to come running to me. So that's what we've been really seeing happen. And even with the finances, this is another thing. It, he keeps trying to put fear on us uh, to what and what God showed me. The reason he's putting fear is to demolish our faith because he knows, the enemy knows that we receive everything from heaven that God wants to pour out through faith. As we believe, as we declare, as we decree, as we proclaim the word of God with faith, God performs it. So if the enemy can rob us of our faith and fill us with fear, then he figures he'll defeat us. But God's saying it's not going to work. <laughs> well, and I always like to say fear is false evidence appearing real. And that's why the battle is in the mind. Yeah. And as you know, when Jesus was tempted before you know he started his ministry, the enemy came to him. And tried to tempt him, and Jesus always used the word of God. It is written. It is written. Yeah. It is written. So did you write something down? Did he give yes. you? Yes, I did. I did. Um, this was, uh, he spoke this word to me March 13th. So I had to go back, look in my journals to find it. He said, the wealth of the unjust shall pour out on the just. What the enemy planned to destroy the banking industry and robbing my children of their savings will fail. Oh, so what the enemy planned, because the enemy planned this, we could hear it in the different news media reports to really demolish our wealth. God says it's going to fail. So I'm going to read that one sentence again. What the enemy planned to destroy the banking industry and robbing my children of their savings will fail. Instead, we, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, shall go into the camp of the enemy and plunder his ill-gotten wealth and return it to those it truly belongs to my faithful children. So God says the opposite is going to happen. We're going to go into the camp of the enemy and plunder his camp and take the wealth that he's gotten through ill-gotten means and return it to our children. And he said, then he went on to say, this is cool. This is the hour for the extermination of the rats both in the natural and in the spirit. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> rats pillage, destroy, and bring diseases. These rats have been scurrying about in secret, but now my light is shining on them and they and their wicked deeds are being exposed. And as he was saying this to me, I had a vision and I saw this enormous rat, big, big, big rat. And this, like, you know, a guillotine, the metal thing from the yeah. guillotine. I saw this come down, just that metal thing, boom, and cut the rat's head off. I'm like, what am I seeing this for? <laughs> <laughs> but God's like, had it. <laughs> and you know why he's had it? Because of what's happening to the children. Now we're, we're hearing more and more and more things. That's the sexual trafficking of the children, huh? The, this terrible stuff that they're doing to the children, uh, changing their genders. Uh, it's just an awful thing, the brainwashing of the children. God's had it. He loves the children. And he's not going to have a whole generation destroyed. Okay? So be at peace. Be at peace no matter what you hear. God has a plan. Back in 2019, before any of this happened, life was kind of peaceful. <laughs> and the Lord spoke to me and he said, a great war is coming to your land. A war like you have never seen before. 
And I'm thinking, can I be hearing God? Because I'm thinking the Civil War was the worst. Mm -hmm. Is this is going to be worse than the Civil War? And so then I said, what do you want me to do? He said, mobilize the troops, daughter. And he said it again, mobilize the troops. And that's, you know, we have a prayer meeting, mobilize the troops praying, but it's more than that. It's the boots on the ground. Mobilize the troops. Get the troops to come to these strategic areas like Mount Rushmore. Get the troops to come. And he showed me, he said, I want portals open. I want, now I'm just going to explain what he showed me about the portals. In Daniel chapter 10, Daniel had received a revelation. So he got into prayer and he prayed and fasted for 21 days because he wanted to get an understanding of what this revelation was. And after 21 days, this angel appeared to him and told him, he said, the minute you prayed, your prayers were heard and God sent me with the answer to you. But the prince of Persia resisted me for 21 days until Michael came and fought with me and I was able to bring you the answer. And that's a picture of a closed heaven, no portal open. When there's an open portal, it's like if you could just see a tunnel going straight up from earth to heaven, and the access, access to heaven, easy, access from heaven, easy. That God wants many, many, many portals opened all over the world so he can pour his glory out, all his goodness, all the blessings he wants to pour out on us so that we can mm -hmm. have our prayers quickly answered. And he said, and even have visitations into the spirit realm and even come into heaven for visitations. He said, when you have open portals, this is all accessible. He said, also... He said, there are evil portals, which you were talking about, that the enemy has portals. And what's in hell, he tries to get the things from hell to the earth. And that's a lot of the wickedness that we're seeing. It's like in your own mind, you could, how could this be happening? It is beyond wicked. It's beyond evil. It's because of these open portals that the enemy is bringing the evil, the hatred, the wickedness from hell to the earth. And the Lord said, I have those who I'm assigning to open up godly portals and sending them, this is one of God's strategies, throughout the United States and eventually the world to open up portals. But he said, I've also assigned mighty warriors. They call them mighty warriors. Okay, special forces. Huh? Mm -hmm. I've, I've assigned mighty warriors to close evil portals. So God's doing both. He's going to open these, and so some of us are assigned, like you, like me, and those that he's calling to come to Mount Rushmore and to any other gatherings that he's having for that specific mm -hmm. purpose to open portals, to get together. He said, this is how a portal is open. Just what you said. When I have people all gathered together that love me, that love me with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength. He said, it's worship that opens the portals. That when a group gets together, and they love me. They love me enough to live for me. He said, it's not just a song service where people are singing and they go home and live their life the way they want to. But he said, it's worship where people gather together and worship and then go live their life the way I want them to follow me. That kind of worship and those kind of worshipers are used to open portals. And I've seen angels on top of people's heads spinning around, going straight up, Drilling, I call them drill angels, but I don't know what God calls them. And they drill up into the heavens and they open these portals. I've seen it. I've seen angels spreading the portals wider. The more the worship goes up, the angels are, are making, expanding the portals, making them larger. Because Well, let me just interject. At the, at the Open the Heavens in South Dakota, we've got the worship band. His name is Robbie Cummings and the Beyond the Veil Band. And my friend, Jill Noble, who's actually also one of the speakers that's going to be there, she actually has, you know, told me about them. And they were just in Dallas at Texas at the Glory of Zion with Chuck, you know, Pierce and Dutch Sheets. Yeah. They had a gathering of the nations where they brought in the first nations first. It was right at Passover time. And then they had the Passover, you know, service or, you know, the next day, a couple of days later, they had the Passover uh, conference. But see, this is also significant is because Robbie Cummings and the Beyond the Veil band, they know how to get into the glory. And they, he's part Native American, but he also is part Jewish and he knows how to open 
the, the realm of heaven. And so I'm really excited because they were there. I met him in South Dakota, I mean, in um, at the glory of Zion. And when they brought those first nations and they were dressed in their, you know, the regalia, but they were all Christian, you know, Native Americans. In South Dakota, Donna, that was the last massacre on, on American soil was Wounded Knee. And it wasn't even really a battle. It was the 7th Cavalry came in and they literally just massacred um, these Native Americans because of something they were doing called the ghost dance. They were doing this dance because they were trying to connect with the relatives. And there was some, you know, bad ideology in it. But let me tell you this, the First Nations, and even Chuck Pierce said this, that as we as the First Nations come together and we honor them and we have Joe Donnell, who actually works with Governor Christy Nome. He's a legislator. He's going to be there as well, telling us he's one of the speakers of the Black Hills in that area and how strategic it is and what they say. It's like the heart of America. And and he's a chief. He actually, I was there last summer and I went to Wounded Knee and they had a tent crusade. They were baptizing people. Oh. Do you know, he told me, Donna, that he had to do four he had to bury four kids on, on the reservation like last week because of fentanyl overdoses. Oh. And so we, we are going to come together. They're going to honor that. He's going to invite us into the land. There's certain protocols, but we are going to see these portals open. And I also want to say what you said about the civil war. And the Lord said there was a great war coming into the land. General Washington, George Washington, at the end of the 1776, I speak about this a lot. Yeah. It looked dark. There was no way we could win. They did their appeal to heaven flag. That's what George, General Washington always did. God turned everything around on the Christmas Day miracle cross in the Delaware. I'm not going to get into that. All I know, it was a shot in the arm. They got more troops that enlisted. It was really strategic. And then they went to Valley Forge to retreat for the winter. When he was in Valley Forge in 1777, Donna, he told his staff he didn't want to be interrupted. And he was in his office when he heard the door open and he looked up and there was a beautiful angel that walked in. And this angel said, son of the Republic, there's going to be three <clears throat> perils that are going to come upon the union. The first one was the American revolution. He was in at the time. Second one was the civil war, but Donna, the angel told him the third was the worst would be the worst that America would be surrounded. He went into great detail, but the basic, you know, message from the angel was America would not, would not go down and that um, you, the union, he said, would survive. Yeah. And so when I'm saying that Donna and I were teaming up together with many other people coming together as one, including all of you, please just listen to what the Lord is saying. And if he tells you to go, Go to my website, marycrowley.com. Let's put that on the screen, Marshall. Marycrowley.com. It's my name's right in the middle of America. The Lord told me that many years ago, Donna. One day in prayer, the Lord said to me, your name's right in the middle of America. And I went, hey. And I go like, wow. Oh. And see, it's not about me. I'm not trying to say like, look at me. What he was saying is from sea to shining sea, you're going to be one of the people that I'm going to help bring forth liberty, liberation transformation, acceleration, demonstration. So, so anyway, this is exciting, Donna. So, so now continue on. It's kind of like, I feel like we're kind of like volleying back and yes. forth, you know, it's because <laughs> so anyway, so Donna, these portals, you know, and because I didn't know what a portal was, I didn't know, but I just listened to the Lord and that's why it's called open the heavens, let God arise. So what other things has he told you about these portals? Um, that and what we're seeing, okay, is after the portal is open, a lot of miracles are happening for the people. At the event in Texas, I just did one near San Antonio, Texas, a few weeks ago. Reports of people with anxiety, um, depression vanished. These different situations people were going through, grief, terrible grief people were, were suffering from it. They couldn't get free of it. Instantly vanished. <laughs> people were filled with the joy of the Lord and then they were equipped and they went forth and began releasing the glory and being used by God. So it's an equipping that happens. It's a freedom We're we're, you know, we're the army of God and God's got to get us kind of fixed up. We might have some issues. And so in the glory, he fixes up his army. So we're strong and we're not all wounded. 
and then sends us forth equipped with the glory, with great faith. Oh, ha. And just that wonderful presence of God and knowing what a, where God wants us to be. Like we're all going to have a different lane that we're in. He's saying, don't get out of your lane. Whatever your lane is, stay in that lane. If it's intercession, stay there. If you're preaching, preach. Whatever it is, get in there with me and go do the work that I've given you to do. And that's what's happening. As we're going to these places, we open the portal, we leave. Then the reports come back. The glory has so intensified. The miracles are happening. And so the heavens are open and God's able to do the work he wants to do through his bride, through his body. And he wants to raise up not one man, one woman, but an army. <laughs> it's the everyday people he's going to use in this wonderful, wonderful battle for the soul of our nation. And we are going to, we're going to win this. This, this is no well, doubt. Well, you know, in my it. daily Bible reading today, I was reading this, the chapter about Gideon. And, you know, everybody knows the story, but see, God will take the people that most likely that you would pick, like Gideon. Uh, you know, he said, I'm the least of my, my father's house. And God used this man to literally turn Israel around. He, but he first had to tear down the altars of Asherah and Baal. We're seeing that in our nation, Donna, with the, with the abortion, which God, thank God, Roe versus Wade got overturned. But now they're trying to literally push this LGBTQ agenda and, you know, we love people that are, you know, uh, of that ideology. We're not trying to tell you, like, we don't love you. We do, but we don't agree. God doesn't make people. He made them male and female. And the enemy is the author of confusion. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, he also uses, and we talked about this last program, I'm doing a film about Lonnie Frisbee, the Jesus Revolution movie came out like in February, it has done over $50 million dollars. But nobody knew who Lonnie Frisbee was. He was the catalyst for the Jesus movement. He was molested at eight years old. He got into the bisexual lifestyle in 1967 on a mountaintop outside of Palm Springs, California. He cried out, God, if you're real, reveal yourself to me. And all of a sudden, he had a vision of the Pacific Ocean being filled with people in darkness. And Jesus appeared to him and said, I'm putting a light on you to reach lost people. And the Lord connected him with Chuck Smith, the pastor of a fledgling little tiny church that he was ready to quit. And God connected him and exploded into this movement called the Jesus Movement. Donna, Lonnie's former wife, Connie, told me that Lonnie said what the hippie was in the Jesus Movement, God was going to use the homosexual or the LGBT as one of the voices that he was going to touch and redeem and restore and so if some of you, I feel God's heart now, are struggling that you have children, I have several friends that their children are wanting to transition. Um, you know, they're not children. They're maybe in their early 20s, maybe the teens, yeah. but they're confused. And you know what? Those who are confused, refused, and abused, God is going to literally touch with his power, shower them with his glory, and they're going to rise up and tell his story. And so you guys... I have Angel Wilson also. He's one of the ones that's going to be at Open the Heavens Rise. In Angel Wilson's story, Donna, he was 19 and he got into the gay lifestyle because people kept bullying him. They kept telling him, well, you must be gay and this and that. And he got bullied. And I heard another guy named Ollie London that was just on the, the, the 700 Club. And he said it was because of bullying that he decided he was going to you know, become, you know, he became a really well-known, um, you know, person on TikTok and whatever. And, and what happened is this Ollie London got saved and literally now he's a voice rising up, but Angel Wilson is going to be there, Donna. And Angel was in 1983 walking down the Hollywood Boulevard when all of a sudden the Holy Spirit started convicting him of his lifestyle. Now he wasn't a Christian, so the Holy Spirit can still touch your children, even if they're not serving him or know the Lord. And he starts arguing with the Lord, uh, Donna, saying, I can't change, I've tried. And God told him, I never called you to change. I called you to surrender. And he surrendered his arms. I mean, I'm telling you, I'm not going to tell his story. You'll have to go to open the heavens <laughs> and, and see it. But let me tell you this, Donna, that, that he just got married last year at 57. He married a woman, Lori, who's going to be there. They were on stage with me in Idaho at the Reawaken America event. And I spoke and I actually brought Angel and Lori up. 
And I said, the Lord said, Lonnie Frisbee said what the hippie was, he's now going to bring in former LGBT and they're going to be some of the greatest evangelists, apostles, pastors, prophets, and teachers that the world has ever seen. Andrew and I talked about this last night on our Hollywood Zoom call. He had a dream, Donna, that 100,000 LGBT were going to be radically converted by the Holy Spirit. And they're going to be some of those radical voices of God. And it was going to be the tipping point to tip things. So, you know, Donna, so I'm just telling you, Angela and Lori are going to be one of the people who are going to be there, as well as Tanya Joy Gibson, whose daughter is transitioning or thinks she's going to tra trans transition. She's going to be shared there about Hollywood, along with me, about what they're using in the Hollywood narrative and, and how we need to stand up and speak up and not shut up. So, it's going to be exciting. So, Donna, we've got about 15 minutes left. I'm going to have most of this turned over to you because I've had people in the past go, well, why don't you let your people talk on your <laughs> like, well, first of all, it's a show. But I'm a good listener. I do like to let people talk on these shows. But this is a collaboration. I'm going to be at your church, in fact, coming up. I'm going to be doing my Freedom Cry movie in Miami, um, I think on the 24th of June. And we've got it slated for me to come on Friday night, I think it's the 30th of June. 30th. Yes. So we'll promote that, but I'm going to be down in Miami with Donna uh, in, in not Miami, but up in, uh, uh, you're in uh, Palm, Palm coast. coast. Yeah. yeah. Palm coast. So anyway, so Donna, just to tell the people, the Lord told you that he's raising up the true believers or, or what did he tell you? It was the um, true yes. faith. What did he give you? What was the oh, word? Oh, okay. I'm going to skip to that word. Yes. Truth tellers. Okay. Okay, Th this is what he said. And I, I when I reread it, this was March 22nd, he gave me this word. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this refers to Tr Tucker Carlson and what's going on with him. Because I feel like he's a truth teller. But being on Fox, you know, he had certain limitations that must have been put on him it, for them to fire him the way they did because he must have said something that was really filled with truth that they didn't want out there. And so now he's free. He doesn't, he doesn't have any strings attached. He could say what he wants to say. And I'm sure God's going to give him a, an absolutely powerful platform. But this is what the Lord spoke to me back March 22nd. He said, the truth tellers are being released and will be given national platforms so that eyes, hearts, and minds will be opened. Lies have separated my children. The truth will unite them. Like a strong thread pulled together cultured pearls so that joined together they make a beautiful necklace, the truth will unite my children and beauty will be displayed for all to see. So he is releasing the truth tellers. Now I'm using Tucker Carlson because that's in the news right now and we can see it. But you're a truth teller. All the people that you've got lined up to come to this event, they're all truth tellers. And as they're declaring the truth, if we've got a little bit of deception that we you know, thought was true, it's going to be washed away and it's going to cause such a unity. And this unity in the body of Christ, Jesus prayed. He prayed, let all be one, Father, as we are one. The prayer for unity. And he said to me, he said, I'm God. When I pray, my prayers are answered. <laughs> so <Yes>. that's, <laughs> I'm like, whoa. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. Yes. He is going to bring us all together in unity. He prayed it. He said, Father, I want them to be one just like you and I are one. And he said, I'm God. My prayers are answered. <laughs> so the truth tellers are part of his strategy to bring about the unity. So as people get up and declare the truth, it's going to bring us all together and make us one in him, united in him. Well, you know, just to interject before you finish reading, it was years ago, um, Donna, the Lord said to me, he goes, do you want to know what part of the body of Christ you are? And I was, I lived in Texas at the time and I was thinking, never thought about it. And he said, you're the heart. And he, and so whenever I feel the heart of God, I cry. And he said to yeah. me, you speak my heart to the people. But he said, tell the people that everyone wants to be an eye or a hand or, a, you know, a, a, a part that a lot of people see. But he yeah. said, really, it's the hidden parts that are more important like who signs up to be the liver? You can live without an eye. You can't live without a liver or the reproductive part of the body of Christ. So the intercessors mm -hmm. where you pray until things are birthed in, 
or things. So you are very valuable. So you might be a, an older woman who's just interceding and praying. Your rewards are going to be as great as maybe somebody like a Billy Graham or somebody that you looked at and thought, oh, there, I could never match up to him. And the Lord said, no, you just do your part. You be a truth teller and you're as valuable as the one. So he gives more honor, Donna, he said, to the unseen parts yes. than to the seen parts yes. because you're actually more valuable. Yes. So don't ever let the enemy say, oh, you're nobody, you're nothing. The only one who's somebody in this next move of God is going to be Jesus and God the Father. We're not going to take any glory. Remember, it says we're going to throw our crowns at his feet yeah. uh, because he's the only one that deserves the glory. So continue on with reading okay. what you have there. Okay. <laughs> he said, <laughs> the truth that is revealed will not just be about injustice in governments, but in all areas of life. So he's, he, there's going to be this great explosion of truth come forth through the tr truth towers, okay? But he said, not just in the government. He said, yes, in all the seven mountains of society, my truth shall be spoken and well received. All seven mountains, huh? We, we know the seven mountains, the media. Well, it's arts and entertainment, it's media. It's economics, it's religion, it's government, it's family, and education. Uh, education. education. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Entertainment. All right. So the truth is going to go forth in all seven mountains of society. And people, it's going to be, he said it will be well received. We think that when we speak the truth, people are going to get mad. No. He said, you know, right now there is a hunger for the truth. People want to know the truth. And he said, as the truth goes forth, so don't be afraid, those of you that are listening, if you have something that God's put on your heart to put on your Facebook or to tell your neighbor or your family, speak it, speak the truth, because the truth sets people free from what deception, trickery of the enemy, just release the truth. He said, um, in, the, in this past season, we have released a great hunger and deep thirst for the truth all over the world. So God said, in this past season we've been going through, he has released a hunger and a thirst for the truth. That's why so many people will come to these events. They want to hear the truth and they want to experience the glory of God. God told me he is going to overcome evil with an abundance of good. He tells us overcome evil with an abundance of good. He's going to do the same thing. He's going to overcome the evil in the world by pouring his goodness, his glory out on the world. And as he pours his goodness out, that's going to overcome the evil. Truth is going to chase the wickedness and the lies and the darkness of deception far away. Okay. He said, this hunger and thirst will allow my children to easily let go of the false tellers of lies and eagerly embrace the truth wholeheartedly. Liars will be exposed and very quickly rejected. Truth tellers will be honored and well received. Unity is being restored to this world, to your nation, to churches, to businesses, and to families. And it's the truth. And I'm going to share what he spoke to me this morning, because this is really cool. Well, you know what I just want to say, when you were talking about that, I just remember when you were little, I just heard, I heard, I heard the voice say, liars, liars, pants on fire. The Lord is going to bring a fire and, and those liars, the goodness of God is going to lead men to repentance, and we're going to see a great wave of his glory. We're going to see a great move of his power. And so don't let, you know, the enemy and those liars in the media. That's why we are the media now. Don't. That's why Fox, I haven't watched Fox ever since they called Biden as president. I yeah. haven't watched him since then. And so anyway, keep, keep going now. Okay. <laughs> this is what he said to me this morning. He said, light has shined in the darkness many times. He was reminding me of times in the past, like when Jesus came to the earth, the light of the world, okay? He mm -hmm. said, this is one of those times that great, that great light will shine worldwide and that light of revelation of truth will expel and expose. So he said, this is the hour we're living in now, that this great light is gonna come. And what's that? The glory of God is mm -hmm. gonna invade the earth through these portals. 
The God that is causing his people to go and open. His glory is going to pour through. And then the people that are at these events, this is what he's showing me, they become glory carriers. So we're like the pillar of fire, literally. That you know, you know, the pillar of fire that led the presence of God that led the people by cloud during the day and by by light at night led them through the desert. He said, literally, my people, when the glory of God is on them, they become a pillar of fire and they go lit with the fire of God. <laughs> so people that come to these events are equipped with the glory and then take the glory out with them and spread that glory in their communities. So if people come from other states, they bring the glory back to their states. It's powerful. God well, that, got a that's great what plan. happened with the Zusa Street here. And, you know, 117 years ago on April 9th, people would come from all over the world and, and they would bring it back to their country, their state, whatever. And it just exploded. It's never meant to be just in one region. Right. And this this is what is so exciting, that because I'm in the midst of this happening now. I'm, I'm doing it. And I'm getting the reports back. In uh, I just got an email last night from someone that was involved with the Texas one and said that someone went that was so filled with grief and that through the ministry and the glory and whatnot got completely set free, took that freedom and that understanding and revelation that they got in the glory to their family that were still immersed in the grief and the family who wasn't at the event got completely set free from the grief too. So. <laughs> well, and that's why it's important, you know, um, I would even suggest maybe people, I know people driving, like bringing their whole families. We have great uh, hotel rooms that we've blocked, secure hotels, like at, at Howard Johnson's and the Best Western, which is right near the Monument uh, Fine Arts Theater. And uh, it's right near downtown. So if you go on my website, again, marycrowley.com, put that up on the screen, not only can you get your ticket, it's $77 for a weekend pass. We do have only 300 seats that it's going to be down more by the stage. And we're going to actually have a special meet and greet with some of the um, speakers. But it's $177 for the group rates if you get it before May 2nd. And uh, there's going to be a gift bag and different things. But, um, you know, we're only having 300. The place holds 1700 so it's not a huge venue, but it's not also really small. Uh, we, we're going to have the right amount there, whether they have, we have 500 or, you know, 1500, it really doesn't matter. Bring your families, maybe even drive, get a hotel room at Airbnb, bring your, your teenagers in particular on Friday evening or young people. And we're going to be anointing everybody that, that night. Um, we're going to anoint them all with the glory to go out and tell the story. And so as we wrap up the show today, um, Donna, I feel that, is it, are you still done reading? Are, are you, is there I've anything? I've got a little more. Okay. A little, I'll read it fast. <laughs> no, sorry to interrupt you. We're kind of, it's a conversation. I know. That's what these shows are, guys. We're conversation. Go ahead. He said, yes, darkness will be expelled and chased far away. And at the same time, my light, my glory, my truth will expose all that was hidden in the darkness. This is what's coming with these portals getting open, the glory coming down, okay? He said, when light comes into a room or a building, those cockroaches and rats that were pillaging in the darkness scurry away so that they won't meet their demise. So, you know, when you go in a, a dark room and you light the light, if it's a place that has cockroaches or rats, you'll see them scurrying away when the light hits. So he's, he was saying, this is what's coming. He said, all the running and hiding that these wicked ones attempt to do will be to no avail. He said, when the light comes, these ones that have been doing, have been like cockroaches and rats doing wicked things, how much they try to run away is going to be to no avail. They will not be able to hide. He said, not only will they be found, but their droppings, the wicked deeds they have done, will be swept up and disposed of quickly by the droppings or by their fruit you will know them okay you know if you've got some bugs in the house because you see the little droppings and god's using that as a parallel by the wicked deeds that these people are doing you're going to know by the fruit of their deeds whether they're good or evil okay 
by the by the droppings or their fruit you will know them look at the deeds words and results of those the enemy has been using and you will know the truth he said a great change is coming and my glorious light will bring it about we're going to see this great change the light's going to come truth is going to come and those that have been involved in this wickedness will not be able to escape justice and exposure and, and an expelling of the wickedness. Well, Donna, let's uh, pray right now. You know, years ago, God spoke to me. There was going to be a greater move of God than the Jesus movement, which I was not a part of. I didn't really know what that was. But I believe now we are at that time. Even the name of my program now is the time. So Donna, why don't we pray? You'll, you can start with the prayer. Let's just pray for the people right now that God is going to release his light and his glory and that, you know, they're going to capture, they're going to, they're going to catch it and they're going to take this light and spread it. And uh, so why don't you start as we close out the program today? Go yes. ahead, Donna. Father, I pray um, that you flood each and every one of us with your glory, that you put a boldness and a courage in every single one of us to be truth tellers, anointed by your hand to go forth through the land and speak your word and speak the truth without fear or without shame. I just feel that God is doing that for us today, that this was the purpose of this show. And so he wants to rise up more truth tellers. So Father, I pray that you give all of us avenues in which we can speak the truth. And that the ears and the hearts, the minds of those we speak to will be wide open to receive the truth. That, that blinders will be stripped off people's eyes and deception off their minds as they hear your truth. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I release your glory now. Oh, let your yes. glory oh, come and flood every single one of us. Oh, Soak us, marinate us so in your glory. We want to be glory carriers. So we want to be pillars of fire that bring your glory wherever we go. Oh, those that have had just a little bit of your glory. I release a huge yes. increase in the glory of God upon your lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the Lord is saying, I know your grief, but now this is the belief. The Lord says that you're going in in my sources, that everything that the devil did with the divorces, that now I'm bringing you in and taking down his schemes. And I'm opening up the people that I will now complete their dreams. And so God said, as you come into the kingdom and you share my word, the enemy will attack you and say, how absurd. But the Lord said, just rise up and say on the mountain that day, Open the heavens. That's what I'm going to do, says the Lord in South Dakota. I'm going to open the heavens and I'm going to be and show them the greatest show in all of history. So the Lord said, come one, come all and watch the kingdoms of darkness fall. For this is the hour that the Lord says, y'all, it's time that we're going to have a ball. God said, it's the greatest show on earth. Get ready. It's time to give birth. So Lord, I thank you for all those watching Holy spirit that you will show them. Lord, this isn't about pushing you lead people, Lord, lead people where they need to be. But all the weird shows, my freedom cry film, it will be premiered uh, from that fine arts theater on that date on June 3rd. That was the day my mother was born. My mother was born on June 3rd, but died on June 2nd. My mother would have been 90 years old this coming June 3rd. It was when Sarah was 90 that she gave birth to Isaac. Lord, I thank you that what you're going to birth with the youth and with the generations that you're going to bring in that day. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Donna, this was, this was so incredible. I love this show. Listen, where can people reach you, Donna? Where can they email you or what's your website? Just to go to my website, DonnaRigney.org. Everything, my events are there, my books, everything is there on my, my website. And you have great books. I mean, you have books that actually talk. You send them to me. They were amazing 
Uh, just tell a few of the books, you know, like when you went okay. to heaven, you have a book that talks about a lot of your experiences in heaven, correct? Yes, I do. The first one I wrote called Divine Encounters has uh, where I went to hell and I went to heaven. So half the book is about hell and the other half is about heaven. And then the Lord continued to take me to heaven. So I wrote a sequel to it and it's the glory of God revealed. And he brought me to this incredible place in heaven, this golden mountain and all the, the encounters I had there. And then the book, I continue to talk about what's going to happen on the earth when his glory is released on the earth. And it's so cool because I wrote some of this stuff like 15 years ago where, where things he showed me and it's happening now. So, uh, and then I also have a, a three CD set of, of um, a, where I teach on how to soak in the glory, how to encounter the glory and how to spend time in the glory and to what the glory is. So that's, that's those around my, my website. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Donna. I'm looking forward to seeing you in South Dakota at Open the Heavens. Yeah. Uh, put my website up again, Marshall. Uh, if you want to, again, uh, you know, get your tickets, go to marycrowley.com. You can get your tickets online. Um, like I said, on Friday evening, it's free. I mean, if there's some issue, we're just, you know, if somebody can't afford to come or whatever, and you really want to be there, uh, we'll work it out. Let's just put it that way. We'll work it out. I'm not going to say, well, you can't come in because you don't give us, you know, $77 on Saturday. So, you know, the Lord guides, he provides. So, but in the meantime, uh, you know, we just know we're so excited about you guys coming. Get your, uh, on the website, there's also links to go right to the hotel rooms. As of next week, um, they're going to release the hotel rooms. The block won't be, you know, secured for us. But if there's still rooms available, they'll, you know, they'll still continue to honor the special pricing. It's just they get a lot of people, Donna, that come to South Dakota because of Mount Rushmore. Yeah. There's a town nearby called Deadwood. They actually do reenactments in the streets of gun battles. And it's pretty amazing. I saw it. So it's a lot of things to do. South Dakota, bring your family. We're going to go on Sunday to Mount Rushmore. A number of us and so it's going to be exciting so thanks for watching you guys it's the greatest show on earth we're excited because god is going to show up and show off and we hope to see you at open the heavens let god arise in south dakota god bless you guys thanks for watching oh and please continue to to like this and share it and subscribe see and, and also for donna's channel when you do that it helps grow our platforms we are now the media just as Tucker Carlson was taken off Fox, now we have to be the ones that put out the good news, that put out the truth, because the mainstream media is, open, is owned by mostly just a couple corporations, including BlackRock, Rock, and they're putting out disinformation, yeah. and we are putting out the truth. So please like, subscribe, and share the show today. And if each one shared it with one person, it could go viral. And then also go to my Facebook is Mary Crowley Ministries. And on Telegram, it's Mary Time, M-E-R-I-T-I-M-E. -E. So please go to our other social media platforms and uh, really continue to spread the good news uh, all over the world. Thanks for watching, guys. Love you, and we'll see you soon in South Dakota. God bless.